And I want it, I want it for you guys to be on a card that bends. So it's got to have some. Uh, and then after you get the card, I want you to laminate it. Okay. What is color? It's a pigment. It's called an aniline dye. What what forms does color come in? Permanent, semi-permanent. Permanent, semi-permanent. Semi temporary. Temporary. Direct dye. Okay. You guys should be writing all this down. Permanent, temporary. Direct dye. It comes with ammonia in it or no ammonia. Ammonia opens the cuticle, but there's colors that have just have figured out how to open the cuticle without ammonia. What kind of what form does it come in? Liquid, cream, foam, okay, spray. spray. Right. There's all these different forms that it comes in. Why would you choose one form after the, uh, as opposed to another? Who can help me? It depends on what you're breathing in the, in the hair. Wouldn't it depend also on your application more than anything? Right? Like, let's say you're doing, doing something and, and, it, and the hair has a tendency, it's liquid and it's slipping off the hair, but you want it to smother the hair. Right? Then you'd use, well, you'd use a bottle, yes, or you'd use a brush. But you'd also... You guys know what the word viscosity means? Yes. Okay, so it would depend on the viscosity of the substance that you're using. That would apply towards your your application, right? Have you guys ever done a balayage highlighting? Okay, that bleach is different. The balayage bleach is different than regular bleach because it's thicker. They do it with clay because it stays. So you can do it without oil. Okay, so the viscosity varies in all different forms so that the way that the, it, the color comes in the bottle or in the tube comes in different forms. So liquid, foam, gel, spray. Okay? So all colors do not, all colors are not permanent. Some are, some are semi-permanent. What does that mean? What is the difference of a permanent and semi-permanent color? Anybody help? Can we say it one more time? Uh, the temporary hair colors are only like physical changes in the hair, but like for the permanent hair colors, they like chemically change the hair. Yes, to a point. Yes, that's very good. Can you lift hair color? Can you lift color? With permanent, yes, you can. You can't lift it, can you? Okay. So you, yes. Semi-permanent only goes the same color or darker. Same color or darker. It only deposits. Exactly. Same color or darker. You can't lift it. But with permanent hair color, you can lift. And the reason that you, the difference is, is because permanent hair color has ammonia. Semi-permanent doesn't, or there's various combinations that people use to get around the ammonia. I'm not going to tell you who does that. That you guys have to do your homework on that. But some, there's some theory in the industry that the ammonia does bad things to the hair in your body, so you don't want to be all around it all the time. But the products that they use to go instead of ammonia actually could be worse for you okay all right so there's different kinds of, of color too one is called unblended and the other one is blended what that means is unblended means that you've got the levels one through ten and the tones and they're in different bottles you guys follow me okay what can blended color means that the level and tone is all in one bottle, one two. So let's just add, the, the levels are in numbers, numbers, and tones are in letters, right? And some, 
Some some lines actually use numbers for their letter for their tones as well. Okay. Huh? Yeah. But if you're gonna do a C G six, what would that mean? Copper gold. Copper gold. Copper gold tone level six. Follow me? Yeah. Okay. So C G six. That's how that's how you usually these colors, you guys use well. Yes. So that's how these colors tend to come. CG6. RV5. What would that mean? Red, violet, five. Right. Um, NV10. Natural. Perfect. You guys are on point. Okay. So that's how you discuss colors. Now, when you're using unblended colors you're using levels and tones and you do the blending so the blended ones they do in the factory and they come in one tube as RV5 or NV10 or CG6 you guys follow me and up and down and all the all, you know, all the different combinations yes No, no, there's many more, and I'll get to. Okay. okay, so, so now, um, then there's a company who decided, a couple companies who decided, let's not, let's not put it all in together, let's leave them separate, and there's advantages to that. What could the advantages? Say Matrix or Redkin or well, when they give you a CG6, do they tell you how much C is in there? No. Uh -huh. Did they tell you how much G? No, so you're guessing, aren't you? You have to use it over and over to kind of get to learn it, and then you kind of get it. Okay? But with the, uh, with the uh, unblended color, you're putting the tones in. So you have all the tones, you have all your tones, and you have your levels, and you're mixing. So I'm taking the level 10, putting it in the bowl, then I'm taking the NV, and V, no, nat, uh, natural violet, and I'm putting it in, and I'm making that. You guys follow? Mm -hmm. Except there's only, there's, and why is that better? Because I know what I'm putting in. It's that simple. Now, what you get when you're using this kind of a color, and this goes back to my story. Thank God for Aveda, because it's the one thing that helped me. It's, it's the thing that completely took me out of this whole fear factor because I could never understand, like when somebody would use a CG6, they're using something they don't even really know what it is. Do you follow me? Like you're using it, but you don't know what it is. You know the end result, but you don't know going in. So it's very, it creates anxiety, okay? So once I started doing this, then the whole thing got a lot easier. It was like, I know what I'm putting in. And I know if I look at it and I think it needs more of this, next time I'm going to write it down and I'm going to do it. You guys follow me? Okay. So what you're doing is when you're doing unblended color, you're doing it and in every single color that you do, it teaches you. It teaches you. It teaches you. When you're doing blended color, you're not being taught because you're not seeing it. You don't know. You know half the equation. You're seeing what you have what it does, but you're not seeing what it is. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now. So which are the companies that do unblended? Aveda, Chromastics, Logix, and I'll find out if there's another one, okay? Now, there's another advantage to color like that, and, I, and I'm gonna go and I'm, I'm gonna tell you that when you walk into a salon and you get a job, you're not gonna be able to tell, most likely, unless you're a renter, you're, you're not going to be able to tell your boss that you need a whole color line in there. They're going to tell you to go fly, right? But I'm going to, I'm going to get you around that. I'm going to explain how you get around that, okay? Okay, so uh, where was I? The whole color line. Oh, one of the, okay. This unblended takes a whole wall this big in your salon, color, color, 65 colors, 85 colors, you know, CG5, RB10, RB6, RB7, RB, 
thousands of, I mean, it's crazy. The, the, the outlay is so expensive to have a whole color line. And not only that, it's super space consuming. Whereas when you're working like this, you can, you can get all of your color in a cabinet this big. You guys follow me? So it, it will cut down your, your investment and your space. And space is always an investment. Okay? So, I'm a, I'm a big proponent for unblended color. Now, what I started doing though, you guys, for years I used Aveda. And it helped me, be, it gave me, it was a tool that just, every time I would do a color, I would learn from it. Every single time. It was so amazing. My colors were getting so, so much better, so fast, it was excelling me like that. But, then, after years of doing it, I could call myself a master colorist. I knew what I was doing. What does a master mean? It means you're in control of what you're doing. You know what's going to happen before you do it. That's a master, right? Not leaving anything to chance, and you're, you learn as, as much as you possibly can about the topic that you are a master in, correct? Everything about it. Now, I just went to Christoph's salon last year. They don't carry a beta. They don't carry chromastics. They don't carry logics. I said, would you get a Veda in? They, and at first they were like, yeah, we probably would for you. And then I started thinking, no, you know what? That's just a crutch. Why am I going to do that? I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn their colors, and I'm going to. It's going to make, make me even better colors. You see what I'm saying? So I started working. They they use L'Oreal. They use about seven different color lines in L'Oreal. And so what what they do in L'Oreal is very, they simplify for everybody. But is simple better? I don't know. What's better, simple or on the money? You follow me? Would you rather mix your own colors and know and, and learn it and have a complete command of it? Or would you rather have them mix it for you because it's simpler? So that's, well, that's your choice, exactly. So what I did, though, is I took all of these all the combined colors like this that that um, L'Oreal had, and I and I completely broke them all down. What is in there exactly? What's this? What's that? And so basically, I started working with them, and I, it took me about six months, and I started to master that too. Okay. So what I'm getting at is that there's tones, there's levels. You can mix your own colors, or you can use them already mixed. This you're going to learn faster and better. This will take you longer, but you can still master it because what you do in your mind is you break it all down as if though it is in different bottles when you're mixing it. Okay? So, let's go. Here we go. Okay, so let's go over the levels. Number 10 is ultra light blonde. Number nine is light blonde. Number eight, blonde. And these numbers are like a universal sort of speak that all hairdressers use with each other, no matter what color line it is. These, no, these numbers apply to all color lines. Okay? Seven is medium blonde. Six. Dark blonde. Five, light brown. Four is medium brown. Three is dark brown. Darkest brown. Number two, one black. All right. So in 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 the factory, they're in charge of these dyes or pigments, as we are saying. They're putting them in the tube. They're putting them in the tube in the form of a gel, in the form of a foam, in the form of a cream, and so forth and so on. A lot of co color companies. 
they carry their their pigment gets carried in a substance like a foam or a gel. And then a lot of other companies will use things like keratin in their color, or they'll use honey base in their color and so forth that will help preserve the hair color. Okay? A lot of what you decide to use will depend on your applications that you that you're doing. What's what is the better substance for the application that you're doing? Okay. Now Let's go over, let's turn this around, okay? Let's go over what's underneath these colors. I know your teachers are teaching you this. I'm just trying to put it all in one solid form for you with no holes in it, okay? So ultra blonde, what's underneath ultra blonde? Once bleach or color starts hitting that hair, what is it, what is it going to do? What's it called? Palish yellow, but what do we call that? What is that called? Underlying pigment. Follow? Okay, so write that in the note somewhere. All those things under those levels is the underlying pigment. That means once this starts to lift, that's the color you're going to see. So, in ultra blonde, it's palest yellow. Light blonde is pale yellow, blonde, yellow, medium blonde, gold, dark blonde, gold, uh, uh, medium blonde is light gold, dark blonde, gold, light brown, light orange, medium brown, orange, dark brown, dark orange, darkest brown, red, black, darkest red. Have you guys ever seen somebody walking around with a color that's super, super warm? Okay, that's because the person who was coloring that didn't take into account underlying pigment A and B, how to neutralize that underlying pigment. Okay. Uh, what's number five? Number five is uh, go, uh, light orange. Light orange. Okay. okay, now let me talk about underlying pigment. This is, this is, this is like a misnomer that people are thinking. Oh, she's blonde. She's going to be, she's not going to have that much of an underlying pigment. Guess what? If you're an albino from Sweden, you have an underlying pigment. Every single person on this planet has a warm underlying pigment. That's just the nature of hair. Okay, so everybody's warm. Even if they're very blonde, they have a little bit of warmth. They have hell yellow, right? Or down the line. If they're black, if they have black hair, obviously, you know, that's going to throw red immediately. Correct, guys? Once it starts coming down. So you have to be, what I'm, what I'm telling you is you have to be ready for that. Okay? So, um, we can't get around it. There's no colors that will, that will take your hair and turn them from this level to this level. Or, sorry, from this level to this level without some sort of warmth in them. It, they, it won't exist, okay? So don't think that exists. When somebody comes in and says, I have natural ash hair, don't believe them, because they don't. Okay? Nobody has natural ash hair. Everybody is warm. What did I just say? Every, everybody is warm. Okay? We're fighting underlying pigment on every client. That's why being a blonde colorist is the hardest thing to do. Because you're fighting that all the time. When you go down into the lower and you're not lifting up high, you're not dealing with the with these colors that prevalent, okay? And they're not going to show because they're hidden by the pigment. Yes? What do you mean by very, when you said, um, you ever seen anyone who has very warm hair, does that mean like an orange tone? No, very, yeah, what I'm saying is every single person in no, this no, room, no, right? Mean, going back. Every single person in this room right here has warmth in their hair, underlying. But when you said, has that, you ever seen someone with very that has very warm hair, what does that mean? Does that mean orange? Oh, warm, yeah. Yellow, red, orange, okay. warmth. Yellow, red, or orange. Okay. And we're, we're going to go over that on the back in a second, okay? So... Um, keep asking questions, you guys. These questions are good. Like I said, if, if, if it's not making sense, just ask the questions. 
There's no stupid thing so, right here. Let's talk about underlying pigment for a second. Underlying pigment is what shows when the hair starts to become bleached or lifted. It's what's underneath. It's called the it's it's the pigment that's in the hair that you're exposing. Okay, so you got to know if you're going to expose it, how you're going to expose it, what level you're going to expose it to, and how you're going to get rid of the unwanted tone that you're leaving. So that goes to peroxide, also known as developer, which also comes in different forms. Cream, comes in liquid, comes in, comes in sprays. Okay, so peroxide developer is the catalyst. What does the catalyst mean? Catalyst means it's there's two things that have to work together. You and I, there. it sparks it exactly. So the way I look at it, if, this will help you in your formulation. I don't look at it as developer, I look at it as oxygen. Do you follow me? The more oxygen I put into that bottle, the higher the lift is going to happen. Okay? Because that's what, so we have 10 volume, right? We have 20 volume, 30 volume, 40 volume, and then we have under 10. Some companies make 6, 9. Okay, 15, okay? Yeah. But in the natural speaking about hair color with each other, we're going to use this. I'm going to go into lower peroxides in a second, but what does 10 volume do when you use it with the color? It deposits or lifts one level. You guys follow? Yeah. So every 10, it's another level lift. So this is one level, two levels, three levels, four levels. Oh shit, this is getting complicated. Well, wait, wait, it's not that complicated. No, the 10 is the one. Let's not go, no, let's not get that complicated. Because look, you look at the person's hair, you have a swatch, you go like this with the swatch, you go, that, that matches. Okay, that's a six. You go over to your chart, that's a light blonde. I'm going to have, I, when, I, when I do hair color on her, when I lift her hair color, it's going to throw gold. Follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, if you're using a, a color that's already blended, what fights gold? Blue. Okay, and we're going to get into that. So then I'm going to get a color that has blue. Follow? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a color... So I'm going to pick the right level based on the level that I want it to be. If she's got a level 6 natural, her natural hair is a level 6, and I want her hair to be an 8 natural, what would that, what would that formula be? What would I pick? 20 volume and what, and what, and, and what tone? Twenty volume with a blue and a and a violet mixed in together. Okay, why? Because violet cuts yellow, blue cuts orange. If it's gold, it's orange and yellow. What if it becomes greenish? Oh, green gets out red. No, but if you do that and it oh, becomes green. This is a great question. This what? is the best question anybody could answer. When this guy was in my salon teaching me this. He said the sentence I'm about to tell you, and I just said, oh, my God, Tom, I had, like, I actually have goosebumps right now from it. I said, Tom, can I kiss you? He goes, what up? I go, dude, you just said a sentence that actually I've been wondering my whole entire life, and nobody's ever told me, and this is what he told me. He goes, the number one rule of hair color, here's the number one, write this down. It's inside here. If you go to your inside book, the number one rule of hair color. See the rules up to always remember? Number one rule of hair color. Coarse hair rejects warm 
and accepts cool. What? Porous hair rejects warmth. So the in more hair the color. hair is porous, the less it will be. The more it doesn't want to take on a a, a warm color. Like a permanent warm color? Permanent warm color or, or a toner or a semi permanent warm. Mm -hmm. So what do you do in this yeah. case? What do you do? You have to adjust for it. This is why hair color is so hard. Okay? But once you know this, you're gonna go bing, bang, boom. This is what you do. You look at the hair, you go, where am I starting? Where do I want to go? What do I have? What's gonna happen in between? What are the steps I have to take? You map it all out in your brain. It all makes sense to you, then you do it. And you don't even worry about it. You always go with the theory, not by your feeling. Okay? So, let me explain it to you. There's different zones of the head. Look up here. There's hair that comes out of the scalp. Is that porous? No. 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 There's the mid shaft. Is that porous? Yeah. Somewhat. There's the ends. Yes. They're fried, dyed, laid to the side. Mm -hmm. Right? Are they porous? Mm -hmm. Oh hell. So when you take your when you take your toner on that girl you just highlighted everything, and you put it on her hair, all the different zones in her hair might need a different form of mixing. Because if for some reason, let's say you wanted to put blue into that color at too much of a pace. Too much blue. What's blue and yellow? Green. green. You just created green hair. Right. Okay. That used to be my worst fear in life. I'm going to turn some lady green, and she's going to hate me for life. But what I found is that when I, okay, another thing is this, called... First, primary color, and we're getting ahead of ourselves, but it's okay, let's get into this. Primary colors, what are pri what's a primary color? They're the colors that you can't make. They're the colors that are what they are. The, there are only three of them. They are what? Yellow, blue, red. Okay? The combination of those colors makes every color, okay, in different forms. Okay, so what's in between the per, the primary color and the second and the secondary color? It's called a tertiary color, the third color. Okay, is across from yellow. See that? Okay, and then I'm going to let it do its thing. Now, what you have to watch out for, though, is that you've got the head. Then let's just call the three zones. Right. And these zones, there can be more than three, but we're going to put it to three just for understanding purposes. So when you're doing the consultation, you have to look at the at these and you have to think, okay, man, her ends are super porous. So when I get, when I do it yellow and I put violet on, these might gra grab violet because they're so porous and violet is a cool color, right? So it's going to suck violet in. So basically... You have to figure out how you're going to not have that violet turn into violet. What would you do? You're going to put more yellow more in yellow. that color, okay? Even though you have yellow in the hair, you're going to put it in the color because that's what this is missing. This is missing yellow because it's porous. Because porosity doesn't have an underlying pigment as much. Lavender blondes and blue blondes. Yes, that... That, that came out of people making mistakes, and then it became a fashion trend, okay? So when you see lavender blondes, blue blondes, it, that's exactly what's going to happen to the hair. Now, that looks cool on a 20-year-old girl who wants to be hip, but you do that to some business lady, uh, right? I, so now you can see, like, when you mix your own colors, you see how much more important it is to mix your own colors with your own tones? rather than just grab a tube that's already done. Because I can vary the degrees of all those, rather than just grabbing that one, like I say, blunt instrument that they make for you. I can make it, I can make my formula sharper, more precise. Any questions? Um, when you, would you apply the yellow on the ends by itself and the violet at the roots? That's a great question. No, you put them in simultaneously. Okay, simultaneous. And it's in it's all in the rules to remember down here. Okay? 
but it's a great it's a great question. Uh, what I do is I because now you guys you know that faded roots are super in, correct? So everybody's fading their roots, right? It, it all started with ombres and then it went into faded roots, and now almost every major kick-ass color that's done in a salon that costs money and that's fashionable has some <coughs> form of a fade from the root out to the end. You guys know that, correct? You don't. Back in the 80s and 90s, ladies wanted to see those those stripes in their scalp, those light stripes, because they they want they wanted their 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 highlight to last as long as possible. So they wanted that right down to the scalp. Now, because of the way hair is done and girls are looking at magazines, they don't want those highlights in the scalp. They want it to go from darker to lighter as it comes out. Okay. What was the question? It's easier to maintain, but it's well, also, it's, it's softer. Exactly. Yeah. You said harsh. It's softer. Just like cutting can be softer. It's, it's a softer way of doing hair color. Yeah. But it takes way more steps. See what I'm saying? We have to highlight it. So what I do when I'm toning is I go in steps from levels and tones down. So the first level I'm going to put on is the lightest level. That's what I want on the ends, but I put it on the whole head. And then the next level that I'm going to put on, I put on the medium level. And if depending on how much warmth is in here that I want to scrunch out, then that's how much, that's the tones that I put in. And as I go to, then I come in and I put right over the hole. So I go yellow, leave it on, leave it on for a certain period of time, mix another formula that has just a slightly lower level with maybe a cooler tone. And I put that on maybe half the hair, and then I'll go back to another level, a little bit darker, a little bit cooler, and I'll get there. Just guessing. But there, there is answers to every single thing that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So all you have to know is those answers, you put in the consultation, you put this puzzle together, it's like right here. In, in, uh, go to rules to always remember. See the one, see the one last? Oh no, over here. Oh, it's on number 10. I'm going to come back to that, but I'm going to jump to it right now. On number 10, the 10 commandments of hair color formulation. The last one is this. This is where everybody wants to end up. Have you guys ever done this? Have you ever been in, in here and you're, you're doing a formula, and then you start second-guessing yourself. One day I was, I was looking at this. I went into, like, I think it was, like, Kinko's or something, and I was looking at, like, this cheat sheet that, this, that they had for something, and I was like, i got to do that for color. So I just studied for about six months, and I put this together. This is all the pieces of the puzzle. Let's go over it, okay? Let's keep doing it. i got a little while on. you got levels. You have underlying pigment under those levels. What is a level? Degree of lightness and darkness of the pigment, correct? It, what is a one? Darkest. Darkest, it's also called? What is a ten? Ultra light blonde, right? What is a six? So you got one, six, ten, see how it works? And this is like a ladder. So the way I have it dri drawn on here is like a ladder because it is a ladder. Because the level on the bottom is darkest, the level on the top is lightest, and you move up this ladder as you're bleaching hair, it moves up in these stages. As you're coloring hair, it moves down in these stages. Peroxide developer, how do you, how do you adjust the different level of the color that you're doing? with the volume of, de of developer, right? So if you want to lift one level or keep it the same, what what do you use? Ten. And if, let's say you want to put two levels. One. Three levels. Ten. Four levels. Four. Okay. See how simple that is? Five okay. levels, you bleach it. Five levels, you bleach it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um,
when I put that color together with the level, I'm going to need to put a tone in there. What could the tones be? Spit the tones out. They could be neutral, correct? Mm -hmm. Neutral means a combination of all three underlying, uh, all three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. That's what makes neutrals. When they, in the factory, they put in the, the red, the yellow, and the blue. The yellow, that's why it comes out neutral. Okay? Now, let's say, you're, it, but it all depends on you, what you're fighting. And what are you fighting at all times? And Because every person has, and every single hair strand has an underlying pigment, correct? Mm -hmm. And every underlying pigment is warm. warm. Don't don't let anybody try to tell you or convince you that there's such a thing as a cool underlying pigment. Nobody has one. Okay? If you're a black person or if you're an albino from Sweden, you have an underlying pigment. You follow follow me? Depend, it, it all depends a lot on your skin tone and your eye color. You can a lot of times look at somebody and know exactly their underlying pigment. If I'm looking at you have brown eyes and you have six color hair, and you have six color hair and you have blue eyes, which is going to have the, the which which underlying pigment is going to be harder to get rid of? The one with the brown eyes, exactly. Okay. All right. So let's stay on this front page for a second here. You got a hair color ladder. You go up it. You go down it. When you're going up, when you're lifting, it goes up in these stages. It lifts in these stages. When you're depositing, it lifts in those stages back down the other way. You cannot, you cannot lift hair with semi-permanent color. You cannot lift it. It's impossible. Okay? What do you need to use when you're lifting hair? What kind of hair color? Permanent. Permanent, right. Can you lift hair with semi-permanent hair color? No. Okay. Can you deposit with permanent hair color? Yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. But why would you? And here's what I'm here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to throw another mind boggler for you. Draw this. Draw this. See this? This is a box. Draw a box, and then draw. Sides and a top. This is a top. It's got a little handle on it. Okay? Go ahead and draw that for yourself. This will give you a good visual later when you're trying to figure this stuff out. Okay. So this box equals this box here equals the hair shaft. Okay? When you once you get color into that hair shaft, you have to lift up the lid of the box, correct? Mm -hmm. To put it in. How do you lift it? The handle. Okay, <laughs> so what would you call the handle? What is it? Developer. Developer. Exactly. Okay, so if I'm lifting up with a 10, I'm lifting just a little bit open, right? If I'm lifting with a 20, a, a 30, a 40. You guys follow? Does that make sense? Is that a good analogy? Okay. So now let's go into let's go into really like epic color. So one of the things that we're trying to avoid when we when we uh, do hair color is we want less fadeage, correct? Less fa fadeage. Fade. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of ladies will come in and say, my hair color faded very quickly. They want long-lasting color. Okay? So then what would you do? So a lot of people are like, okay, hone in on this. Diego, hone in on this. You're going to be a, you're going to be an awesome hair color. You just tone it or instead of coloring. Yeah, it, but here's here's what's the tendency of everybody. Shit, let's just throw the let's throw the hood. Let's th let's throw it away. Let's just open it up every time. Let's put right, let's open it up as much as we can and put it in. There's only one problem. The farther that you open this lid, the more that the hair color comes back out. Do you follow me? So 
what you want to do is you always want to keep your volume as low as you possibly can get away with to get the job done. Because opening the hair too much with too high of a volume creates fadage. So you want to just squeak it to the level that you need it and deposit it in, close it. Is that me? You guys following me on that? Yeah. Yes. So I heard that's when like, you like, need to like, you need to like, lift hair so much that you don't feel it, it damages it. Exactly. 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 Did you hear what he said? It basically washes out quicker because it doesn't get into the cuticle the way it should. So a lot of people, oh, here's another thing that I used to think. I used to think like if I wanted vibrant color that I should use a higher volume. Actually, it's the opposite. If you want more vibrant color, use a lower volume. Because the, the high, once again, it goes back to this. The more you open that lid, the less vibrant the hair will be. Follow? But it's brighter. You can make it super bright. It, it's, it's, it might be brighter, but it's not as, it's not as vibrant. So it doesn't have as much density of color in the shaft. You know what I mean? <coughs> Particles of color in that hair shaft. There's the level and then there's the tone. We want that to be very vibrant, filled with color. Mm -hmm. You follow? Yeah. Because as I lift this box, the the actual other hair color is coming out. I want you to think of it that way. Yes, dear. The way I like it is like a big thing. You can use it for and it's like Exactly, exactly, exactly. You can come back out of that thing. If you open it wide, it's easier to get it in, but it's also coming out at the same time. Right. So you just want to lift. lift. The more vibrant you want hair color, the lower volume you use to get the job done. Okay? Which is one thing that I've learned. So when I'm doing shows, when I'm doing hair color for shows, when you guys come to the show, you see tons of really vibrant hair color. You've done everything really low volume. That's how you get that vibrant thing. Okay. You guys want me to leave? Now? No, I'm just she wants her hair. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can do it. Okay, so let's go now. Let's let's let me let me just state this. We're only going to be able to go so far. What is this? It's a color what? Which is also what is this though? That's a ladder. Color goes up, it goes down, and it goes in fit. Like we can't, when we're walking up this ladder, we don't go like up to the top, right? We got to go one at a time, correct? So that's how color progresses. Up and down, one level at a time, okay? We've got the, we've got the level, right? Then we have the underlying pigment. It's right on here for you. You can look at it so that you can anticipate it. Oh, I'm going to have yellow. After this blonde, after I do this, I'm going to have yellow. So you're already thinking now, how do I, how do I counter yellow? Go to the back of the color. Go back here. And you go against, across, to cancel out, right? Okay. Let's say somebody has an underlying pigment that is yellow and orange. Now how do you do it? Let's say, have you ever taken out a highlight and it's got yellow and orange, uh -huh. like some of the hair is orange? Yeah. Now I got to tone that. What's right? the ratio area? Need to look at the so, ratio area. what? Between this to this. You would use a violet and a blue. Ooh, it's easy, right? So, you really leave the hair orange. Up to a point, until, but it will disintegrate. No, no, because you can't go in with a highlight and go through it. You see what I'm saying? You can't pick them out. So you would have to find a color that has both violet and blue. Yes, you mix them together. Yes, yes. And what you can do, what I usually do, because I'm always concerned with the integrity of the hair, Listen to this. 
is I go with violet. I go with violet first, and if the violet doesn't get it, then what do I do? Then I add. Then I go back and I add blue into my toner, and I go over it with blue. But I'm telling you guys, so there's a thing in art called value. Who can tell me what that means? Value. Value means the degree of value is like is blue a way darker color than yellow? Right. If you if you dye your hair your 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 if you have a white t-shirt you dye it blue isn't it darker than yellow? Yeah. Okay, so every color has a different value. So the cooler colors have have more value than the warm colors. Okay, so depending on the color that has the lightest value, that's the one I will tone with first. If I'm not sure, let's say then that it does not get at that orange. Then I'll take a little bit of blue, but a way less amount of blue. So you have to use less. These these colors you use less of than these colors. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! And to remove yellow and orange, we use blue and white. Yes. We, we both use uh, yellow and uh, orange because you said. Uh, no, no, no. It, it depends on the porosity. So in the pro in the in the zones where it's very porous, yes, you might add a little yellow into the blue and the orange. It's not orange, just yellow. To remove orange, we just uh... to remove blue, you use orange. To remove yellow, you use violet. To re to to remove yellow and orange, blue violet. Blue violet, no orange and yellow. If the, if the hair is porous, then you would put. You would put the opposite of blue and the opposite of violet back in. No, I'm sorry. The opposite of blue and the opposite of of, of violet. That is yellow and orange. Exactly. You would put that back in, into the hair where it's very porous. Okay. I swear this is going to come out with you guys knowing knowing way more and feeling way more comfortable when it's time, okay? This isn't easy, this process. It's Recording really time deep. monitor. What does it go you need over? to add maybe the terrestrial colors on this one? That's the back. I'm talking about the front, the ladder. Oh, that one. About the ladder. What is this tool for? What's this front for? For what? For finding the level, the level the and the underlying thing, thing right? Okay, what's the back for? For finding the tone. Okay, color is all only two things level and tone, right? Carried in some sort of a lick, in some sort of a, a product of a cream, a, a foam, a, a gel, a liquid. Okay. What about when you tone and then you didn't get what you wanted, so you tone again? Like, how does that work? Okay, so what if, okay, so. Think this through. Let's say you're dying. Let's say you're tie dyeing shirts, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say you're not sure about what the color that you want. Would you put on the darkest color or the lightest color first? Lightest color. That's how you do it. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how you do it. You're not going to just throw the blue on if it doesn't, because that blue it mixes with too much yellow. What is it coming out? Green. So you're gonna. So here's the here's the great point. Let, listen to what I'm gonna say. What fights green? Red. Red. What is what is violet? Red. It's yellow and blue. So see how the violet will help you fight <coughs> that. Mm -hmm. So so in other words, when you're mixing in violet and blue together, it's scary. But there's red in the violet, which will keep the possibility of the green coming in there. Which is the ash and the violet. Green is violet. Blue is uh, green is uh, green is ash. Vi uh, blue is ash. Um, violet is ash. Okay. So. Now you just have to apply it. 
No, no, yeah, no. Oh, you got to do. You're gonna have to do many, 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 many colors and to think about this a million times over and over and over. So if somebody says to you, "What are the what are the primary colors? What are they?" Yellow. Okay. What? Yellow, red, and blue. So what I want you guys to do is immediately right now put that into your into your memory. Say it the same way to yourself every time. Yellow, red, and blue. What are what are the primary colors? Yellow, red, and blue. Okay. Every time you say yellow, red, and blue. See what I'm saying? Because that will immediately give you the starting ground of yellow, red, and blue. And now you know what it is. So instead of you searching around like, is it green? Is it red? Is it okay? Red, yellow, red, and blue. What are the primary colors? Yellow, yellow, red, and blue. Exactly. Every time that's what you say to yourself. Okay. Primaries are yellow. Yeah. The first thing you do. What do you do? The first thing you do in the, in the consultation is you establish the base color. Exactly. What you have, right? Because you can't you can't figure out where to go unless you know where you start. Right? So you start, determine the natural color or color, color, colored level of the hair. That's number two. So a lot of times, people don't realize that it's the natural color or the colored level. You're dealing with the natural underlying pigment, but if the hair has been colored, you're also dealing with the color that they put on that hair. Okay? okay. Number three, determine the natural and or colored tone of the hair. So you're going to say, okay, it's a level six with a gold tone. If it's a natural, if it's a natural color, it's a level six. See it? Go to the front. It's a level six, which is dark blonde. And underneath the, the, le the, the pigment that I'm going to have to fight is gold. How do I fight gold? There's a little blue and violet, correct? Because gold, gold is a combination of yellow and orange, right? Determine the percentage of gray hair to be colored. That's going to tell you how much, what kind of, of developer you have to use. Because you cannot color gray hair with 10 volume, even if you're only going one level different. You guys follow? So on gray hair, you must use 20 volume or higher. Just write that note for yourself. On gray hair, you have to use 20 because you have because it's more it's more resistant. So you have you need more oxygen to open up the, the hair shaft to get the color to taste. So what kind of uh, what kind of um, what do you need to uh, when you're doing gray hair, what kind of volume do you need to use? 20 or higher. 20 or higher. If you use 10, what's going to happen is you're not going to cover. And then they're not going to pay. Okay? Determine the porosity of the hair. See that? Remember? Determine the porosity of the hair. Because that's going to tell me the different zones on how I might have to readjust my formula for the different zones. Does that make sense? Then you're going to go determine the final desired hair tone. So if somebody has red in their hair, natural hair that they that their their natural tone is throwing red, but you don't want that red, you're going to have to pick a tone that has you have the level. You're going to pick the level and then the tone. And what would the tone be that would fight red? Green. Green, exactly. So you'd have to pick a tone, a level with a green tone. Uh, I have a question about gray hair. Uh, if we want to <clears throat> apply dark uh, dye color, right? L uh, like number three, still we should uh, use number 20? Yes. Not yeah. Green. No, because you're going to need to get into the hair shaft, and, and that hair is stubborn from the gray, so it will resist opening up. So you need more oxygen to open it. Okay. okay, so determine the final desired hair tone. So that means you're going to pick the level and then you're going to pick the tone in accordance with are you going to change their, their, the natural path of their hair? Or are 
Are you going to go against that red that they're doing, or are you going to enhance it? You might, let's say, you, you might want it more red. You can put more red in. You know what I'm saying? So you either enhance the tone, or you counter it by the tone that you choose that's in the vowel. <clears throat> determine if there are any special situations. Oh, wait, no. Determine if your level will be lighter, darker, or staying the same. What will that, what will that determine? You know it. The volume. The what? The volume. The volume, the volume of the peroxide, right? Well, determine if you're going to go. You're going to stay the same, you're going to go up, and how many levels are you going to go up, right? Okay. Determine if there are any special situations. What could a special situation be? She's on medication. The room you're in is super, super cold. The room you're in is super, super hot. You're going to put her under a light or no light. You're going to put her under a, a heater or no heater. Her hair is maybe very, very fine. So, so it doesn't have resistance. What, Diego? So is this like chemical issues like a perm or a Brazilian blowout? Got to be careful, really careful, because that's going to that's going to add a lot of porosity into the hair. So that's special. Exactly. You got you got to do like a whole thing where you eliminate. You draw. You got yeah. Ask every question that you possibly ask them. Okay. Okay. Um, determine the mixing procedure, application method, and developing time. So now once you have all these pieces of the puzzle, you're going to figure out how am I going to mix this product, how am I going to apply the product, and how long of a time of, is it, you know, am I going to need to develop for this particular head. They're not all the same. Everyone's different. So you put that together. Is it usually like 45 minutes? Yes. And after 45 minutes, it doesn't work anymore? Yes, to a point. But there could be other situations that come into play there. Like what? Uh, porosity. Yeah, porosity. Porosity. Uh, very fine hair. She's got. She's got a Brazilian. See what I'm saying? Then the last one. Once you got all this puzzle figured out, use your information. In other words, think about every single thing on this sheet, <clears throat> every checkpoint, kind of like a pilot in a cockpit. If you're checking off everything. This check, this check, this check. Right? Once you have that, and you're confident with it, and you've checked everything, now you can go, I'm going to use this information that I have. I'm going to relax. I'm going to think it through. I'm not going to rush. I'm going to relax and think it through. Because you can take five or ten more minutes to, to get a formula right, rather than rushing in and then take like five hours to deal with whatever you create. And then I'm going to formulate and color with confidence. And that's when hair color gets really fun. When there's no, huh? Eventually. Yeah, when there's no anxiety. Let's go to the rules to always remember. Porous hair rejects warm hair colors and accepts cool hair color. Porous hair rejects warm and accepts cool. What are warm colors? Yellow, orange, and red. What are cool? Green, blue, and violet. Number two, when depositing color in porous hair, make sure that the deposit of the drab tone does not occur first in the hair shaft. So in other words, I would never put on, that's remember what I was telling you when I when I tone hair, I don't put on cool colors first. Yeah, you start with the lighter ones. I start with the lighter and the warmer tone. Because I want that to fill in to the porosity. Okay? And then I work from there. I work from lightest to darkest, not darkest to light. That makes sense, right? You can't get, once the dark's in, it's in. So, so that goes to the next one. When coloring or toning porous hair with cool ash or drab colors, add warmth to keep the base of the hair color from grabbing too deeply in the hair shaft. So the base of that hair color in cool colors is always kind of a gray kind of gunmetal. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we're going to 
Because once that goes in, it's not coming out. But if it goes in with warmth simultaneously, you're good. So it's like, I, I guess another, uh, another analogy that I use to, to make this for myself is, you know that game where it's like, musical chairs where everybody's walking around the chairs and there's nine chairs and ten people and everybody sits down. There's always like one person that's left out. So, in other words, same kind of idea. Once that cool color goes in, they're sitting. It's sitting there. You can't get it out. But if you put it in with warm together, you're good. Follow? Okay. Um, When coloring or toning porous hair, a, color, a cool color and warm color mixture can be deposited into the hair shaft simultaneously without the hair grabbing the draft base. So that just confirms that rule that I just said. When dealing with porous hair colors that are cool after draft base will appear overly blue, green, or violet. When coloring or toning porous hair, if you mix in warm with it, they will counter one another, and, what, and they will give you more of a neutral tone. And what is what? What does the factory put into neutral tones? What? What does the factory put into the? If they have a level N, level N meaning neutral, what colors have they? What tones have they put into that bottle? Yellow, which are uh, yellow, 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 red, and blue. Oh yeah, that's right. Right. So do you, do you see how I want you to, to memorize those all in that same way? I've always memorized it red, yellow. Okay. So you, if that works for you, you can do that. But I go yellow, red, blue because yeah. I go lighter to darker. Yeah, that makes sense. But that, what, I, what I mean by that is I, don't have, I, I want you guys to get that where you don't have to look at a chart or just immediately in your mind. Red, red yellow, and blue. So now you know it's what you're going to be doing. lifted. Is that what, what it means? It, it means you can't lift with the hair color. You can only go the same color or, or darker. Or darker. Which is called which is called deposit. Right. Okay. There's lift and deposit. Now when uh, okay. When coloring gray hair that is fifty percent or more, use a color with a double dye level. This is huge. Okay, have you ever seen a bottle that has two ends? Double digits. Two ends? Mm -hmm. That means neutral, neutral. That means a double, double dye pigment. line, double pigment. Okay, so it is this for gray hair? yes, yeah. it will say six nn, seven nn. Oh, okay. Okay, you won't get the coverage you're looking for. Um, warm color appears lighter in level. This is huge too. If you're trying to, so a lot of times when we're, <laughs> a, lot of time. a lot of times when we're, um, when we're coloring the hair, we're not only trying to color hair, we're trying to create shape with it. Does that make sense to you guys? So if I want volume in the crown, am I going to use a darker color or a lighter color? Remember, if, if I'm, look, you guys, everybody look here. I know my voice can. You want volume? You, you need to have it darker. No. If, I, if I'm going to draw an eagle, I'm going to draw an eagle up here, right? And I'm only going to draw it with this, for shading. Where I, want, where I want that eagle to recede, I'm going to use what shade? Darker. Where I want it to come out at you? Lighter. Because that's, that's incredible. Have you ever seen somebody draw something and it's like three-dimensional? It looks round. It looks Okay. They do it with lights and darks. So that's how we do it with hair color. If you want something to come at you or up, lighter. If you want something to go away, darker. So let's say I'm doing. Huh? Let's yeah. Let's say I'm doing. Let's say I'm doing a color. Let's say I'm doing a style where I want a lot of volume up here, but I want the sides to be real close. And I cut it that way, and then I color it that way. What would I do to make these sides diminish? I color them. Lighter or darker? Lighter. Dark. Diminish. Dark. Go away. Draw back. It's like when you contour your face. Exactly. And exactly. Your face. You can relate it to contouring yeah. your face. Exactly. Anything you want coming out the is light. Anything you want. you want receding is dark. Will you repeat the question? Yes. 
What if I wanted to do a style where I had a lot of volume up here, okay, and I wanted and, and I had a bang, and I wanted and let's say I had I wanted I cut this real short so it's over comb and I wanted it to kind of go away. In other words, not be prevalent. Oh yeah, that would be darker. That would be darker, okay. right? Okay. You guys have that one? <laughs> warm colors appear lighter in a level. So a level six warm will look like a level seven. A level six cool will look like a level five. Good? Warm colors appear lighter in, in level, cool colors appear darker. All right, here we go. Hair color application at the bottom. Multitonal, multidimensional. Contrasting. Colors that are bold, punchy, trendy, or avant-garde. Okay? How do you create those? Go down. Select levels that are farther apart on the color ladder. That's how we're going to get something that's more bold, chunky, PC, right? We're going to pick a level 6 and a level 10. Select opposing Tones, such as cools and warms. So we don't want it to be all harmonious. We might want one of the tones that I put in the hair to be right here with the foils to be cool. And then and then another foil to be um, warm and cool and warm. So we're contrasting. We're, we're getting those to oppose each other. And then use sections that are larger and more defined. That makes sense, correct, you, you guys? So if you want... Contrasting hair colors, you want to put colors that are bold, punchy, trendy, and avant-garde. Select levels that are farther apart on the color ladder. Select opposing tones, such as cool and warm tones, and use... This is for multi-dimensional colors, meaning foils. And use sections that are in larger and more, def uh, larger and more defined. Makes sense, correct? Okay, let's say you wanted to do harmonious colors, where where you got like maybe four colors of, you got red, gold, pale yellow, and blonde, right? So you'd use, so harmonious colors, colors that are soft, sophisticated, and polished, select levels that are closely together on the color ladder, select tones with the same family, all warm or all cool, select sections that are smaller or less Defined. And on the bottom it says creating shape with color. High levels create volume and move forward. Low levels create contour and recede back. All right, these are, you can start. With, 